Here we're gonna talk a little bit about reactive oxygen species. We did cover this a bit yesterday, but reactive oxygen species are a family of oxygen-borne molecules. There's two of them that are up here that are considered to be free radicals, but the other two are equally as damaging because they metabolize to the free radical forms. So you've got singlet oxygen, superoxide, hydrogen peroxide, and the hydroxyl radical. The two that are in red, superoxide and hydroxyl radical, are technically free radicals. The other two are not. But singlet oxygen becomes superoxide very quickly. Hydrogen peroxide actually becomes the hydroxyl radical very quickly. The worst part about this is that superoxide is generated within the skin. It's actually generated in every cell of the body that produces ATP. As the mitochondria makes energy, it's also making this free radical. Okay? Now, the body knows that it's doing something that it shouldn't be doing, so to compensate, it produces what? Superoxide dismutase. How many of you have heard of that before? Okay. It's used as a topical skincare ingredient, and the main purpose is for neutralizing superoxide. It's much more of a preventative type of mechanism, and you see it in a lot of maintenance type of products, which it should be, because if you start with something like this, it helps to lessen the accumulation of damage over the years. You can get somebody started on something like this while they're in their 20s, Okay, the skin is going to maintain its appearance for a much longer period of time. It's one of those ingredients that gives you the promise if you use it regularly for long periods of time, it will help to protect the skin in the long run. Okay. The hydroxyl radical is a very devastating one. This is the one that we generally recognize as being produced through sun exposure. UVA can um, interact with oxygen that's in the bloodstream of the dermis and generate the hydroxyl radical. Okay, so that's one of the main reasons why UVA in particular is so bad for the skin is because it leads directly to the production of the hydroxyl radical. I think I mentioned yesterday hydrogen peroxide is an ingredient that has been used in skincare products for many years, but you don't see it used nearly as much as you used to. It's because hydrogen peroxide also generates the hydroxyl radical. Okay, so those cosmetic brands, really, you don't see them much anymore. And even hospitals have gotten away from using hydrogen peroxide to treat wounds that control the bacterial infection. And it's relatively new stuff. Okay, the whole reason why we're talking about this is because we're trying to do what? We're trying to protect the skin from inflammatory processes. Maintaining the lipid structures of the barrier of the epidermis is absolutely critical. It's the main reason why we use antioxidants in our skincare products, particularly things like vitamin E. Vitamin E, which can come in a number of different forms. You have ester forms like tocopherol acetate, tocopherol nicotinate. You have the alcohol form, which is tocopherol. And now we have a new category. It's not new, but it's being much more closely examined in our industry called tocotrienols. Anybody familiar with tocotrienols? Okay, if you're not, you will definitely be well-versed by the end of this class. Tocotrienols only come from natural sources. I can get tocopherol from a number of different suppliers and the ester forms as well, but if I want tocotrienols, I've gotta get it from places like rice bran oil and palm oil, okay? The reason why they're so special is they can actually inhibit one of the major processes that come from glycation. And I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but we'll come back to that in a bit. The whole reason why is they're lipid antioxidants and they can reside within the membrane of the cell. So they really function, again, as kind of those soldiers on the front line so when a free radical, many different types, approach the cell, vitamin E donates an ion to stabilize it. When you look at free radicals, they're, they are molecules that have unpaired electrons. And in nature, electrons like to have pairs. If it doesn't have one, it's going to go looking for one. And particularly susceptible are the membrane structures of the cell. So free radicals break down the membranes of the cell, and it leads to further inflammation and damage. So by using those things, we can stop that process. Okay? Make sense to everybody? Okay, good. And it's one of the main things that we focus on in professional skincare is helping to protect that, um, that layer. Environmental insults greatly damage the barrier and its built-in mechanisms for, for, for repair, leading to more inflammation, increased sensitivity, and even further production of free radicals. Now, if we have damage to the membrane, you have a higher level, take a step back here, a higher level of what? Transepidermal water loss, which is the loss of moisture through the surface of the skin. We talk about moisturizing the skin. What are we really talking about? We're talking about slowing down transepidermal water loss. This is kind of a concept that for some professionals is a bit foreign, but you can't really topically hydrate the skin in the sense of putting water into it. The water that's in the skin comes from the food that we eat and the 
liquids that we drink, primarily, obviously, the water, right? So about moisturized ingredients, we're talking about things that help to slow the rate of transepidermal water loss. We don't want to completely stop it, but we certainly want to slow it down. If you have an accelerated level of transepidermal water loss, you have what? Dehydrated skin. And when you have dehydrated skin, you have a much higher potential for dry skin. Dehydrated means lack of water. Okay? Dry means lack of oil. Okay? Lack of lipid structures or impaired lipid structure. When you have a lack of water, these membranes will actually start to crystallize and rest on top of one another. When that happens, it produces free radicals, specific ones. Okay? So it's kind of a devastating, slippery slope process that we see when you have any type of inflammation being incited, right?